Investing in our planet's future sounds like a great idea, but it's not that simple. Our friend Chase Wilsey with Wilsey Asset Management is here to explain. Great, we're going to talk about some things that I really don't know much about, so we're going to learn. I'll help. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's start. Question number one, what is an ESG fund? So an ESG fund, it stands for environmental, social, and then also co corporate governance. So it looks at kind of those three factors, and, and that's essentially how the fund managers are picking their investments. So the main concept I would say people are going after is they want to look to see, you know, is the board diverse? The big thing is the environment. Is it helping the environment? That's really why they were created a few years ago. So these are like environment focused. Exactly. Okay. Uh, it says here why they should be avoided. So now <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, the environment, we want to help the environment, we want to do this, but then now you're saying we shouldn't, we should avoid these? You know, there's a few reasons I would say to avoid these. Uh, the first one I look at is just because something's a good investment for the environment doesn't mean it's a good investment for your portfolio. And, and the, the thing I'm going to focus on is recently the EV hype it was very high. The and cars, the electric, okay. Electric vehicles, yes. We looked at companies like Rivian and Lucid. Rivian a few years ago hit a high of about $172 a share. Share. Okay. Today, it's under $9 a share. Lucid is another great example. Lucid hit a high of about $58 per share. Today, it's at $2.40 per share. Stop. And I just, just saw this car on the road, the Lucid, yeah. yesterday. And, and yeah. the problem is, again, it, it sounds like a great concept, but when you look at the numbers for Lucid as an example, and their most recent quarterly report, they lose about $145,000 per car that they manufacture. They're not manufacturing enough cars to turn a profit. And in 2023, they burned through $3.4 billion worth of cash. I don't know if this company is going to make it, but the problem was people invested in it because of it's good for the environment, or that was a ah. thought, so to speak, when in reality the business fundamentals weren't there and people lost a lot of monies on these but stocks. Chase, I mean, clearly the trend mm -hmm. and the way that everyone's moving is take care of the environment, mm -hmm. take care of the planet. So what are ways that you can do that financially and do it in a safer way? Yeah, and the big thing I always tell people here is, is you can look at investments and you can still find different information on how, I'm going to say, eco-friendly they are. A lot of companies now release this data and, and it becomes a big question too, where do you draw the line? I say this because, you know, we have like a refiner in our portfolio and people, oh, I would never invest in a refiner because it does gasoline, jet mm -hmm. fuel, diesel, things like that, but they also have an investment in renewable diesel. That is very, very eco-friendly. So you have this big question of how do you want to invest and I always tell people you should never invest in a company just for the eco reasons but it can be a reason to maybe avoid one but you have to come up with those principles and you have to stick to those principles and the big thing is the companies still have to have strong fundamentals a great example one that actually I recently found was first solar for solar, again, solar panels. Yeah, solar panels are huge, right? Solar panels are huge. They are actually profitable. They trade at like eight times earnings, so it's a great valuation ratio. They don't have much debt on the balance sheet. The numbers look very strong for it. I do tell people, you still got to be cautious. I mean, I have some questions around solar panels. Number one is what are the input costs? Okay. And also number two is China's a big player in it. What if they dump our market with a lot of solar panels? It could pressure the what margins. What does that mean, dump our market with? They produce solar panels very cheaply. Okay. And then they sell them all in the U.S., which now means First Solar would have to sell their solar panels at a lesser price and it would compress margins, it would be very detrimental to their business. Oh. So those are some things you have to understand. And that's a big thing we always tell people when we invest. We always look for reasons why not to buy something rather than why to buy it. And I'm not saying First Solar is a great investment or a potentially bad investment, but the numbers look very good at the get-go. Now you have to answer the mm. questions of what are the potential risks and can they overcome that? I like that question that you just posed, and I think that that's probably the takeaway, is that for people that may not understand this entire world, is having somebody to be able to answer, help ask and answer those questions so you can actually make your money grow, because that's the whole point of all this, right? <laughs> Absolutely, and that's what we always tell people is, yeah. you know, when we invest in companies, we don't like to invest in companies that are out here destroying the world, yes. but if you have questions about why we bought something, yeah, give us a call, we'll talk about it, because again, it's your money, we wanna make sure we're taking care of your goals, but also, too, we want to be very realistic and try and avoid buying the next Rivian and Lucid where you lose 90, 95% of your money. I mean, that Lucid looked like a beautiful car on the road yesterday. I was like, what is that? And I'm, I, wow, I didn't know that about all the, the shares and whatnot. You got to be careful. We learned something. Thank you, Chase. Always good to see you. Thanks for having me.